And so you're just sitting there waiting for the muses to bless you with creativity. And if this sounds like you, you know you basically end up waiting forever. Spare Room with Karen Terry. Hey y'all and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry and today we're going to talk about how uniqueness is killing your creativity. In our individualist societies, we are told from birth that being cliché is the worst thing that you can be, that copying is akin to sin. We are told that you are your own beautiful and unique person. No one is like you. Don't look to others, look within yourself. To me, this sounds all like blah blah blah. So today, I am here to tell you that you are not in fact, a beautiful and unique snowflake. And in fact, that line of thinking is absolutely killing your creativity in your role play. So part one, there are no new ideas under the sun. Part of the problem when it comes to overvaluing uniqueness is that you're already copying, even if you don't know it. There is no such thing as a new idea. It is impossible. We simply take a lot of old ideas and put them into a sort of mental kaleidoscope. We give them a turn, and they make new and curious combinations. We keep on turning and make new combinations indefinitely, but they're all the same old pieces of colored glass that have been used through all the ages. And Mark Twain wasn't a neuroscientist, but he was onto something here. This is indeed how memory and creativity works within the brain. Now, scientists are still learning a lot about this process, but when it comes to being creative, that is what we're doing. We're taking our memories and our ideas of the things that we have experienced, and we're combining and recombining them in new and creative ways. But none of those ideas is original or unique. Everything you've ever thought, you learned from somewhere, you saw it somewhere, you heard it somewhere. And your brain took that and held on to it so that it could later apply it to new contexts. And this is how new ideas are developed. This means that when you reject things you've seen before, you can't begin that creative process, and so you're just sitting there waiting for the muses to bless you with creativity. And if this sounds like you, you know you basically end up waiting forever. And you might be saying, Karen, I get that, but I don't want to copy anyone. I'm scared of not being unique. I don't want to be boring, and if I'm doing the same thing as everyone else, how is anyone going to be interested in role-playing with me? Okay, fair. Sameness is boring, and we get tired of seeing the same things over and over. And I agree, straight-up copying is not creatively satisfying in the long run. However, you must walk before you can run. Just like when we're talking about drawing, for example, where tracing can be a really great learning tool, we have a tracing-like tool in role-play. Tropes. Tropes are your friend. Tropes are not cliches, and they're not bad. Tropes are simply a thing that is repeated over and over in stories. And if something is repeated over and over, there's probably a reason for it. There is a reason that genres form and that certain tropes are akin to certain genres. And I would say when it comes to fiction, Typically, those repetitions are because people enjoy that particular trope, and there are probably even tropes that you really enjoy in the media that you consume. So think about your favorite genre. Everyone has one. You will tend to watch a movie or read a book in that genre, even if it's kind of mediocre. For me, that's supernatural stuff, especially werewolf stuff. Yes, I watched Teen Wolf way beyond after it was good anymore. I admit it, and I am not ashamed. So stop worrying if you've seen it before or if it feels similar to your favorite book or movie or TV show or whatever. There are other role players out there who like whatever it is you're going for. You just have to find them. And as a bonus, if you're using a trope that people are generally familiar with, that's less you have to explain before you can start role playing. Which brings me to my next point. Instead of striving to be unique, strive to be understood. We are participating in a collaborative hobby. You can't roleplay by yourself. To roleplay, you have to write what you're going to write, and then someone else has to read it, understand it, and reply to it. If you're too far out on the unique branch of the tree, then no one is going to understand what it is you're writing, and thus they can't engage with it. So before you can think about being unique, you have to make sure that you can communicate your vision to others. And that is, of course, way harder than just following tropes and genre beats. 
It takes practice. It takes playing with those tropes for a long time. It takes playing with the same role players for a long time. It takes perfecting your prose, all of those things. So give yourself time. Don't worry about trying to jump in and be perfectly unique all at once. So give yourself time. Don't try to jump in and be perfectly unique all at once, or maybe no one's gonna get it. In addition to striving to be understood, what I recommend to really feel creatively satisfied is to strive to be authentic. Is it super cliche that I would do literally anything for Adam Driver if I ever met him in real life? Yeah, it is, but I'm not afraid to admit it. I like the roleplay tropes that I like, and it doesn't matter to me if it's been done a dozen or a hundred or a thousand times. I'm still gonna write that Stockholm romance plot and you can't stop me. And what I've laid out here is an example of being authentic. Having the confidence to know what you like, know what you're looking for, and writing that. If you're being authentic, the creative process will kick in. You'll see new and exciting connections between the different characters and tropes and plots that you like. This means you will naturally end up putting your own spin on those things when you write, and they'll be uniquely you. And this can only happen because you're taking your authentic likes and desires into the creative process, no matter how overused or cliche or copycat they are. And the good news is, it only gets easier over time. The more your brain practices that creative process, the easier it will become for you to engage in it. Worrying about unique from Go only stops your brain from getting into the creative process in the first place that allows you to make anything unique. So, to revisit what we discussed in this video, there are no new ideas under the sun, but sameness is boring. However, you must walk before you can run. So instead of striving for uniqueness, strive first to be understood, then strive to be authentic. So these are my thoughts on ways that you can be unique in the creative process without that uniqueness kind of paralyzing you from the beginning. So did these tips help you? Are you gonna kind of use this process going forward? Let me know down below. And as always, of course, don't forget to make it a great day.